Hi everyone, it's Jonathan Matt Mendes Painted Love and I'm going to attempt to take you through a tutorial from beginning to end. Today's project is this wonderful piece of furniture. It's been at the back of the workshop for some time and I've been wondering what to do. A lot of people have said to me, don't touch it, don't touch it. It's fabulous, but it's seen better days. It's got a manufacturing finish on it, which I'm not keen on. It was probably good in its, its day when it was, it was created, but now it's time for a change. I'm going to take it from shabby chic to faded grandeur. So if you'd like to come in and have a closer look at the project itself, create my faded grandeur look, I'm going to use two of Annie Sloan's colours. We may throw in another one later, but you will see that throughout the video. The first colour I'm going to use is olive. I'm going to give this whole piece a good coat of olive. Um, and the second, the second colour, I may mix olive and French linen together um, to create a, a washy effect. And then we're going to use some of Annie's uh, new wax which is um, her new white wax she's got a white and a black wax we're going to use that to give this sort of faded grandeur look so to start I'm going to show you basically basic brush strokes that I like to use when using waxes wax finishes so we're going to apply the paint unevenly really we're going to cross hatch with the paint so you're creating natural brush strokes and and textures into the paint which helps with the wax when you finish the wax will sit into those um, pieces now with this having the manufacturing finishes that I said about it's quite shiny it may need two coats So now the base coat of the olive is on the piece of furniture, which had about one full coat, maybe a little bit more, one and a half. We're going to start, whilst it's drying, we're going to start to mix up a colour wash that I'm going to apply to the top. Um, the colour wash, I want it to be very similar to the olive, I, don't, I just want a, a variation in tone. So I'm going to use olive as my base, um, French linen and a bit of burgundy. Now, burgundy, you'll wonder why I'm putting burgundy into it. What it'll do is it'll neutralise a little bit of the olive and it will um, make the colour a bit deeper. Um, I'm going for that look of old, worn out wood and I want to create that washy, old, vintage feel to it. So, um, let's mix up the colour wash. Um, I'm going to show you how I do it. So, we'll open cans of paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a good glug of olive into a basin. So this is the base of my colour. I want it to be very similar. So that's olive. Use a good, I think we'll go for a, big, a good teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half. And then we're going to add the wild card. Not too much, just enough to neutralise some of that, the greeny tones. And then we're going to mix it together. As 
you can see the colour is a little bit like a darker version of um, French linen. A little bit cocoa-y, but I want it to be uh, a woody colour anyway, so this is what we've got. Beautiful colour. So we're going to add a glug of water to loosen the paint so it becomes more of a wash that we use. I will be applying um, water to my brush as well to loosen it even more. Um, and then you'll see it will wash over. I want some of the uh, olive to come through. So it's going to be a browny, olivey colour all over. Right, we're going to apply um, the colour wash to the olive. So as you can see, it's really watery, batter-like, runny batter solution. So it looks scary, but what we're going to do is just paint over everything. One good coat over the olive. It's quick. Apply. Don't worry about the trickles just yet. Come back to them. Just get a coat on. There we go. And then it's easy to get into the detail when it's much runnier. With this paint being a little bit thinner it'll be easier to distress it back off with a little bit of water to reveal some of the olive. Um, I'm not putting this on in any rhyme and any reason, it's just randomly applied. So once we get this colour wash all over, so it's nearly full coverage, I'm going to use a little bit of water because it's a little bit thick. You could have, I could have watered it down a little bit more, but I haven't. So I'll get my first coat on, and then I'm going to come back with some fresh water. I've got some water to the side of me, and I'm going to just loosen it all up. So now the wash is dried in, what we're going to do is a wet distress. Um, and the reason we put the wash on thin was so this would work quite easily. You could do it with sandpaper, but I'm going to do it with um, water and a kitchen cloth. So all we're going to do is some fresh water and we're going to wring out the moisture. And what we're going to do is just r gently rub away the colour wash so it will reveal some of the... Um, olive from underneath and I want it to be a bit random and rough. I'm going to try not to go too close to the edge because of the manufacturing um, paintwork underneath it will pull away too much but if it does that's fair enough we're going to put some white wax on it anyway so and it was white underneath so I'm happy with that so what we're doing is we're really using the cloth to, as a paintbrush really to blend the, the colours together so by wet distressing, you get a much more softer, smokier feel, and it's just, you may see it on camera, it's just removing right back down to the olive. You have to keep your cloth moving and, and, and wring the cloth back out again to remove the paint from your cloth, otherwise it won't work. You'll just keep on getting bogged down with the paint. So. That's what we're going to do there, so we'll have a little bit there, and we'll work on the top, so let's show you some of the top. So really, it's like giving it a good old wash, really. We're going to wet it down, and you can see it's removing some of that wash. I don't want to remove it all, I just want to remove some of it to bring back some of that lovely olive. So you can just see... 
use your cloth as if it was a paintbrush, soften it out, smoky edges, and you'll get that worn feel. And when we white wax afterwards, it'll add another layer of depth to the whole piece. Applying Annie's new product, white wax. Um, she's got a black wax as well, and it's fabulous. I've used the black already, and it works wonders. But this is the first time with a white, so I have sneakily tried a bit, which is turning out fabulously. So all we're going to do with the white wax again, take your wax out of your tin and put it onto a plate, because you don't want to contaminate it with any paint colours or anything, because you can mix these with paint. Um, so let's go for it. all over. What I've got to say to you as well, it's always read the instructions with any products. The waxes can go on without, the, the white wax can go on without clear wax. It can go straight onto your paintwork to get that whitewash feel. So, there we go. I'm just randomly, I'm putting it into all of the crevices, the corners really, and then we're going to blend it with a cloth. I'm just applying where I want to see it really. At this point it always looks really messy and you think, oh god, what am I doing, what am I doing, just go for it. Just get the stuff on. And I have got my clear wax as well, if I've got to, I just want to loosen it up. So I'm using that uh, a large paintbrush actually, just to, just to loosen it up. So in the areas where I haven't put it, some clear just to blend that in and then it's got plenty on do the front edge as well so again I'm just doing one level at a time I don't want to do it to, you don't want it to dry in before you've had a chance to wipe it away that should be enough and then You should get is that lined sort of wood effect. The tones coming through, and that's why I did it patchy. I wanted it to be patchy to give it real depth and character again. Um, if it had been flat, it would have been nice, but I think it would have been just too flat. I'm going to put it in circular motions on the larger areas just to push it into all of that texture in the paint. It's working quite quick to get it on. And then we'll take it off with the cloth. years of worn out age and infection
more detail with pushing the white wax into the detail. I can go along. I'm going to go down the leg. That was a bit heavy. There we go. Cover two. White wax is a triumph. I love it. There we go. I'll carry on until I'm finished. You'll see the pictures at the end of this video.